We're just getting hooked up, guys. We're just getting hooked up. And I don't have everything I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about now? How about now? Is it going? Yeah. And the web cam seems a billion times clearer. That's what it was. Yeah. It was going from mine to yours back to webinar people. Yeah, that was weird. Is it time? Is it started? Is it time? Is it time? It. Someone says, yes, it is. Good. Let me see. I'm just going to look and see. Yeah, we got enough, folks. Because I know a bunch of people. I know about four or five that just want the recording. Hey, hey, we got another one. We're almost ready to start. Um, and I'm, I just thought of one more thing to grab real quick. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, it's me. We're going to do uh, tacking. Um, it might be a little different the way I do it uh, than some of you are used to, but I'm also going to review a couple other ways to do it. And we're in a different spot in the shop, so I keep realizing the things that I want that I don't have. Is there a button here up there on the table? Um, oh, yes. And I might have to grab some big sequins too. Almost ready. Okay, I think I've got everything I want for now. So we've got a tutu here, and I'm going to tack it in not black thread. So when we actually get into here, we'll be able to zoom in and see what I'm doing. And I'm going to really quick find my absolute favorite needle to do this with. We use doll making needles, which you can get a multi pack of, of a few different sizes here. Get it onto here. Um, so the what we're doing is I've got all my layers on and uh, I usually tack them flat on the table but even flat on the table you're kind of able to change the shape with how you steam it as you work through it um, and I'm going to show you uh, the way that we do it tacking it right side up but you can also tack it completely upside down we'll be doing a little of both and then we'll just talk about if you want to tack it on a form I've got a form over here and we'll show you that. Um, but one thing that a lot of people say is that like they think hand tacking uh, just takes absolutely forever. And I'm gonna show you kind of the way we've come up with uh, over the years uh, that makes it a little bit less painful. So we've got a piece of hoop in here uh, in our black tutu. I didn't give it enough time baking, but we just use hoopwire.com wire. And with writ dye, I got it at least not white was my goal. And this tutu is going to get sewn on to a bodice later on. But what I want to show you, one thing that happens when folks are steaming and tacking, whether there's a, a, um, a bosque on here, if you're going to be sewing a bosque on, 
you could put your Bosque on now, or I know some people put their Bosque on before everything else goes. This one, we're going to be adding the bodice onto it and a top plate. So that's why there's nothing on here right now. But what happens if you don't have your Bosque or your bodice on and you're getting ready to tack it, sometimes as you're steaming and tacking, what ends up, whether you have a stretch panty or a woven panty, all the heat from the steam uh, makes it grow. So what I like to do is take a piece of twill taper ribbon and my girl's high hip is 34 inches. So I'm actually going to measure off like 35 inches of this and overlap an inch because we don't want it to grow while we're working our way around. So I take a nice safety pin and think of it kind of like a stay tape. The light's really good right here right now. We found a good spot. Poor Jared, we got to get him one of those things that mounts the camera to his waist so he can yeah. lean and take a break. Um, but, okay, so I take the uh, tape, so I've pinned her high hip circumference in a piece of twill tape, and then I just like to pin that in about eight spots so that as we're roughing around, we don't accidentally stretch this sucker out because sometimes you'll be all done and everything seems great and then when you join something up or put it on their body you'll have a weird wrinkle or a weird wave and it usually means that you stretched something out of shape so i put just a few pins around here so that as i'm working I don't make this grow. And actually, um, we tack with something in there. So I'm using a towel kind of shaped like a butt. And I can already tell as I'm putting my tape on that I need a little bit more butt in here. So you kind of want to simulate their, um, their size in here. So if you've got a girl who, you know, has a 34, 33 inch high hip and you're tacking it on a form, that's a zero that maybe has a 30 or a 31 inch high hip, it's gonna come out a little bit torqued when you're all done. Tom, would you grab me that pink towel that's in the basket by the washer? Um, we got all hands on deck today. So I can already tell when I put this tape on that's her waist that I need to shove a little bit more into the panty so i had kind of a small towel i'm going to try a bigger towel and see if i'm getting closer to the right size because if you tack it with nothing in there oh i can tell yeah we're better off now because there's some tension on my tape and then i just kind of start to shape the towel into like an oval like a human not a circle. So I'm going to put just a couple more on there. And this is helping me keep from stretching stuff out. And before I start to tack, um, even before I slide the hoop in, I like to just generally give it a little bit of steam. So it's looking kind of disheveled right now. Oh, I'm going to undo my thread. I'm all over the place, you guys. So I'm going to give it just a little steam, and then we're going to roll it up and start. Um, we're going to kind of tack the core of it together is what I'm going to show you. And I really like to get my hands in there, too. While it's warm, I like to kind of start dividing stuff up because you can feel that it starts to lie down. And then when you got folded edges, you want to undo them as you're working your way around because you don't want to steam like a worse thing into it as you're going. And we like to use an iron that has a steam tank or a steam generator. Because if you just use a steamer, I find the steam kind of just like dribbles out. And I like it when it really blasts in there. I think you can get it done quicker. And sometimes with a steamer, 
you take so many passes that you really start to fry the netting. So this, we're going to scrunch this up again. This is just getting us started. Then I like to go to the underside and see if I've got any really weird, you know, sometimes you'll have weird folds going on underneath. And we're going to be tacking this from the middle out is kind of the approach I've, I've adapted. So here I've got a big fold. You just want to kind of get everybody laying nice first. That's pretty good. We got a little a little overlap in our center back, just some extra net. I'm gonna just give that a haircut right now. And then I give a little steam on this side. And you can just keep dividing stuff. And you do need, um, one thing I always tell people is to not tack it the shape you want it to end up. You've got to leave it a little bit fluffy because once they dance in this a couple times or rehearse in it, it's going to start to die. So if you want a pretty flat tutu, you know, you got to tack it a little bit poofy so that by the time it's going to be worn for its like primo performance, it's not completely wrecked okay so i'm going to fold everything up above my hoop layer up and i just have a band of elastic to kind of hold that up like an onion there and um for the folks that we have some brand new folks with us that haven't made a tutu with me before we double a lot of layers so instead of sewing this guy let's just count it for everybody this has one two, three, four, five, and six. Our hoop is in five and six, seven, eight in black, and nine is in cream. So this has got nine layers, but we sewed one and two on one row in the panty, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, and nine. So we've only got five attachment points on the panty and then one attachment point for our top plate. I swear, the dogs sit quiet for hours, and then we start this, and they get worked up. So we're going to be connecting. Uh, I think of this like as like the abdomen or the guts of the tutu. So we're going to be connecting five and six, which is our hoop, two, three, and four, and to seven and eight. So we're going to connect a whole bunch at once on the inside. And whether you do or don't have a hoop, um, what I was telling folks in our page to stage class the other day is sometimes when there isn't a hoop, I'll still put a hoop in so that I can tack it. If you, they don't want a hoop in the tutu, I have a faster time tacking it with the hoop. And then I slide the hoop out and I get a better shape. And one, um, one reason why I, so we're going to do kind of like a star or spokes in here is I've found over the years when I see a tutu that is starting to like, roller coaster on the edge or you get like a weird dip in the back or at the sides it's because the tutu has grown outward so if you think of it as a circle if you add circumference to the outside of a circle the circle won't lay flat on the table anymore so we're gonna like you know do some core power yoga moves here and tack the circumference of this together on board, that makes sense so far where I'm headed. Actually, I'm glad we did black because you can see the you can actually see the layers on the board where the white one just looks like a halo. Okay, so I am using DMC pearl cotton, um, and so I I know some folks have uh, use embroidery floss. This is like this is embroidery floss, but they say to separate it into three strands or less strands. I like to use this stuff just as it is. Um, and you can also get this heavier pearl cotton on a roll. And I think this is a five. I think this is number five pearl cotton. But of course, I peel all the labels off of it, and I'm not totally sure. So we're going to do this in creamy tan and not black. So I've got my great big needle, and I'm going to tie a great big, fat, horrible knot. This is the time to make a gross, clunky 
nasty knot because we don't want this to pull through the net. So you'll see I tied like three chunks in there. And what we're going to be doing is connecting two layers above the hoop to two layers below the hoop through the hoop layers. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull down my next two layers and give them a little bit of steam. And actually, if you're like pro gun tacking, you can do this, hook the middle together also with, with a price tag gun. So this isn't reserved just for hand tacking. I'm going to get one section good, start tacking, and then we'll steam the next section. Oh, got a fold. Okay, so if you don't know the cross stitch, um, their needle is always going to travel to the left while our hand travels to the right. And I've tried to explain this to left hand folks and do it myself left handed, but I'm not able to. It's like trying to teach a left handed person to knit. Okay, so five and six is my hoop. So I'm just sinking my, my thread into seven and eight. And then what I'm going to do is, so I'm on the hip side of the hoop. Now I'm going to come to the outside of the hoop and I'm going to catch seven and eight and five and six all the way to four. Do, 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 do. Like you do. And we're going to make huge cross stitches. So up here, I'm just catching seven, eight, and I'm going down to get a little bit of five and six. But then when I come to the outside edge of the hoop, I'm going all the way to layer four. And I don't want to pull it very tight. I want to leave some room there. If I pull it too tight, it'll start to kind of flip up like a cereal bowl. And really, when I'm up here for seven and eight, if I stick my hand under three and four, I can feel when the needle is to three. So I'm going to cross stitch. I'm catching three, seven, eight, and five, and six all there at the same time. Then when I'm on this side of the hoop, I'm just going to catch four underneath. In a little while, we'll show you the underside of this. And then what's cool is, so I'm tying a knot, and I leave like a good inch of thread or, or pearl cotton or string, whatever we're calling it, floss, because we don't want that to unravel. So I'm going to really quickly finish my star here. Do, 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 do. Of course, I always goof this cottony stuff up. There's one way to open it, and if you open it slightly different, it just drives you mad. Here, we'll let Tom get me another big long string of this. Tom, will you unwind this mess for me a little bit? Everybody needs a Tom and a Jared. That's the best thing. And a Hannah. We have a Hannah today, too. Where's Hannah? She's back there somewhere. There's Hannah. She's hiding in a chair. It's like, where's Waldo? She's working on the pot. So this same thing... You can do this on a dress form. If you like to tack your tutus on a dress form, you can do this same thing. So I'm going to just get through a little more of this. We're going to get through about at least half of this, so we've got a good section to look at. So I'm catching three, four, five, six, and seven. I tied a big clunky knot. Now I'm coming out to four. I'm catching four. And there's really no set amount of layers or like spot to catch. It's just kind of like here's an approach to doing it. And then you start to kind of come up with your formula. You know, like if you're making bouncy merlatons, maybe your tacks are even further apart. 
and maybe you're catching less. Maybe you're just catching the layer above the hoop and that's it. Um, so the more tacks, the more rigid it's going to be. But what I do like about this cross stitch is that even, see here I've got this great big set of folds. If I go in with my hand, see I've got these two great big folds that I don't like. If I go in with my hand and start to divide this and give it a little steam, the cross stitch is going to help hold it. So there, see we divided those huge two lumps into like four or five better looking lumps. And when we get to the back, we're just going to tack right over the back. Ooh, I didn't leave enough to tie a knot. I'm going to tie a loose knot so that I can pull some of my slack back. See, I didn't leave enough slack here, but I can get it back by how I tie my knot. And the first time, you'll either find you've done it way too loose or way too tight. Just call that one practice and do her again. Um, let me just give a little steam to this side. So you'd go all the way around doing that. But um, let me show you what I would do next. So this tutu is gonna get a top plate here in a little bit. This, this whole black tutu and its cream top is getting covered with this really fabulous Spanish top that Tom made. It's Tom Day. I'll show you stuff Jared did too. Got to keep it fair. Um, so the next thing I would do on this one is we've got our middle pretty much hooked together. So my creamy top is getting covered up with my top plate. So I'm going to give my creamy top a little steam again. So if your knots are going to get covered up, don't worry about hiding the knots. You know what I mean? And actually, um, we've come to really like even the way that that stitch looks uh, through a tutu. So if we match the color, it would totally disappear. But we're doing it so that we can see it here. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to thread again a bunch on here. That's good right there. Thank you. And now I'm going to show you kind of like the basic approach to hooking the top down. And you can do this so the knots show and so the knots don't show. I'm going to show you knots, sh knots showing first. So what I'm going to do is I'm, if you had a 10 layer tutu and you hooked this much together, you'd have two layers here. So you just kind of, if you had 12 layers, you'd have more to hook. So you might do another set of the cross stitch over a couple layers, or you might just hook single layers to the layers below them. So that's what I'm going to do right now, is I'm going to hook my cream to the next two layers down. I like to at least be hooking three things together whenever I can, um, so that, you know, so that you've got, you know, a tutu is, is feminine and pretty, but it's also, you know, a sturdy piece of costume. So what I used to do was this. I would thread a knot in with my piece of thread, and then I would put my needle down, and then I would come over here and tie my knot, and we're leaving a bit of slack. We'll zoom in on that later. And then I would put my scissors down and grab my needle. It takes up so much time. And you want time to rhinestone stuff, right? So we're going to thread a whole bunch of knots in. And this is really when this giant needle uh, becomes your friend. So I'm just going about every three or four inches around. And this is getting closer to my top, right? Even though there's a top plate on here, I want this to look nice. So I'm going to go about every four inches, and I'm just making a great big running stitch. And with my left hand, I'm kind of arranging my ruffles as I get to them. So we're threading in a bunch of knots. So I just keep working my, my string around. 
And I'm also leaving plenty of slack in between them. So you just go around like that. Go around. Let's do one more. Then you train yourself to not put your scissors down while you tie all of your loops in. So you get all of it done like this. Then, so now I've got this continue, I've got this running thread. See, I've got a, a thread with slack running the whole way through. Oh, that shows up pretty good. Um, so what you're gonna do now is cut in between each one. So see how I keep my scissors in my hand. I cut between it and I leave at least a pinky's worth of loop. See how I haven't pulled it tight? I've knotted it with, we call this a boy knot because it's just a simple one. Um, and I've left some space so that there's a little bit of room in my net so the edge isn't completely flat. So the less space you leave, the flatter your net will be. The more space you leave, the, the little bit of bounce you'll have. So I don't set my scissors down through this entire process. I just keep going around. And if you didn't leave yourself enough slack to tie a knot, um, you can just skip one, pull out some slack, and then add it back in later. Question. Yeah, we have a question. Uh, just, just double checking. Herringbone stitch is double thread, but this top yep. layer is single. Yep, somebody was double checking. The, the first star we did, we left our thread doubled, and this top here, we're doing it singled. It's totally single. So there's that. So right, even though there's knots on here, if this were the top of my tutu, and I had thread that matched better. Um, I don't mind visually seeing these because I like to see that a whole lot of work has gone into it. But let me show you an easy way to not have the knots show. That's a, that's a fun sentence. Here's how to not have the knots show. Um, I'm gonna take some quilt pins and pin where I want the knots to not show, where I'm essentially pinning where the knots are gonna go. So it's like I'm pinning where I think I'm gonna put a tack. Then, kind of working similar to what we have just done, you take and fold the, um, fold the net up out of the way. So see, I've, I've, that's where the fold is where I put my pin. And I'm instead of going this way, I'm gonna just go up from it, from each one, leaving them connected. So I'm just getting like a quarter inch of the two layers below and about a quarter inch of my creamy top, like that, leaving this running stitch in there. I know um, sometimes uh, we will leave the running stitch in here if the top is getting covered and if the girls are partnering no one. So if they're gonna touch a piece of scenery or a boy, don't leave the running stitch because what's gonna happen is a scenery or a boy is gonna catch that on the cuff of their costume or a branch or her Cinderella broom or a bench and she's gonna step away and it's gonna gather her tutu up like a terrible, uh, it's, it, it will scar her. It will scar the whole audience. It's a bonding experience. I've seen that happen one time and it, thankfully it wasn't a tutu I had done, but it was because of the running stitch. And the guy just carried her off the stage, they cut it, she jumped a little in the wings to get her tutu back, and they carried on, like you do. But there was a total <sighs> in the audience because nobody knew what happened. It just looked like he really liked her all of a sudden for some reason. So then, get your loose bits out, so now our knot is at least underneath, underneath the fabric and you don't have the raw end of the knot on top. So since we've got black underneath and cream, you can totally see it here. But had we uh, matched, had we made this black or made it more of a cream, it wouldn't show as much. But what's nice is then you don't have that raw knot uh, 
on the top side. Okay, let's flip this over. Actually, while we're here, um, this one came up during page to stage and it's just fun to show. If you like to tack stuff down and add a little bling, <coughs> oh, excuse me, you can use a button here, right? Bam, bam, bam. Um, or a little micro tacker. But what we do is we stick a great big old sequin on here. These are 10 millimeter sequins from Cartwright sequins, right? There's a sequin. You put a sequin on it first like a washer. Then we're going to shove net in there and put another sequin on it. And the trick is you've got to kind of hold your fingers as resistance against it so that when you pull, you get the tack coming through the sequin. I don't know if that'll show. And then it's like you have a little kind of like nut and bolt to hold your netting down. So um, let me just do a couple through the net. So I'm putting a sequin on first. And I'm going to just go either down or up, whatever you desire. I'm going to go through my cream down a couple layers and pull it. This one's not advancing. They all have different notes on them, like what doesn't work with them because we blast through them. They say they're industrial. So I put a sequin on, and then I get my little bit of net arranged. Then I'm putting a sequin underneath. And if it just blasts off when you pull it, it means you need a whole kind of put some resistance behind there. And there, so this is a fab way. If you've got a glitzy thing, kill two birds with one stone, put some glitz on while you're getting the top tacked on. In fact, I've I've done whole tutus. Sorry, the sequin in my mouth. I've done whole tutus just by um, buttoning on sequins. You know, it just depends on what you're going for. So that's super cool. Now, let me show you how way back in the day I would tack a tutu, um, which which worked quite well too, and still does. So I used to tack everything from the bottom side. But if you wanted a bell, right, it seems kind of weird to tack it all from this side. If you're trying to make your tutu, see we're starting to get a little bit of a dip here. And with a little steam, we're going to get a little more of a dip. So I'm, I'm not going for straight out at the side. I'm going for a soft dip. Um, if you're working from the underside and want a bell, you have to put something underneath the tutu that's going to help you create that shape. And actually at Houston, we had uh, a set of different like kind of pillows and donuts to work a tutu with so that you could, you could, um, I guess kind of like a, imagine a great big hemorrhoid pillow underneath here so that you could start to shape it a little bit. So I'm putting a towel underneath here. So I'm gonna, I'm going to use the towel to help me make the tutu go uh, a little more English or dip down a little bit. Does that, it's clear to you guys why I shoved this towel under here? Who's my, who's my gauge? Someone say, I get, I get the towel. I get the towel. Yeah. Okay, cool. So if I shove another towel, I can, you know, I can change the shape of what I'm doing while I'm working. But kind of the formula that I, I started with and will still do sometimes. Um, so I pretty much always do this spoke, that cross stitch. But the formula I learned was to tack together two, to tack two to three. So I'm, grab, I'm gonna tack layer two to three. And then I'm gonna, actually I'm, it goes one and then to two. So I'm gonna tack two to three and four, that's what it is. You tack layer two to three and four, then I'll tack layer four to five and six, then I would tack layer six to seven and eight. So two to three and four, four to five and six, six to seven and eight, and I just saw my needle, there it is. But I would do the same thing and thread all of the tacks. So I'm going to go in here and actually each time you're getting ready to tack a row, you want to, um, oh, 
let me go to a section where we haven't tacked already. So right, check this out. I don't know if you guys can see this, but remember we started with that cross stitch. Look, here I have nice tacks holding my three and four to my five and six. So, and then if you go in here, look, I've got tacks holding three also to five and six. So that's kind of like the advantage of that huge cross stitch. But let's go over here to a virgin area. So I'm not going to tack this into a belt, but that's what you would do with a towel or a great big tutu hemorrhoid donut. Hemorrhoid pillow? Hemorrhoid donut? There's a word for it. My dad had one. I used to like to play with it until my mom explained what it was. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to thread two to three and four. And actually, um, uh, in a group, if you've got a production team, um, at the Joffrey, we would always do this with two people. You would both be threading a section, and then when you meet the person who you're working with spot, then you would stop and start tying the knots. And what was great is we could put, you know, about five to 800 tacks in a tutu this way in about 45 minutes. So I would thread the whole row. I would hook all of two to three and four. Then I come back and do my same knot operation. These lower ones, like lower in the panty, sometimes I will tie a smidge, a smidge tighter. It just depends, you know, you think about like, what of the girl do you want to show? Do you want a little bit of bounce? If you want a little bit of bounce, less tax so on and so forth. So you would do that. So that's two to three and four. Then you'd get another bit of, of thread going. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the pictures of the old Russian women at the Bolshoi or Moscow Ballet. They're always rubbing the needles in their hair because when the netting used to be cotton um you wanted to grease your needle because it wouldn't slide through the cotton like it slides through the synthetic stuff the more you know fun fact and kind of gross so i've got two to three and four so one two to three and four now i'm going to tack four to five and six so i've worked my way out and i'm going to tack four to five and six and you can keep your tacks running straight out. You can put them in window panes like a church choir. You know, you can make everybody split. Um, I like the way it looks when, they, when they're more like a spoke. So I, I think I just naturally line up them to the one above it. And then when you get to your center back, right, the center back of our nets open, you just find where your splits are. So I've got my splits, and I'm just putting a tack to hold the center back together. You don't have to stitch that down. So this is four up to five and six, and you would tie those suckers. So if you can, you know, train somebody else to do this with you, you just, you just have a tutu tying party. And actually, I find when I do it with someone else, I, I dink around much less because they're waiting for me to get a roll threaded into the tutu so that they can tie it. And when I first learned to make tutus, Mona at Omaha Theater Ballet, um, she had me do it with a, oh, see, I lost when I pulled it too far, so I'm just going to skip it. She had me work with a stopwatch so that every time I made one, we could kind of see whether I was speeding up and then we would also like double check like did I just cut a bunch of corners or does the faster one look all right so that's four to five and six and then we would do six up to seven and eight so you just keep working your way up and each time give it a little bit of steam to make it look more nicer the more nicer you get it looking now, the better it's going to look on stage. Oh, I'm back to 
overlapping my center back again. So, so that's two to three and four, four to five and six, um, then six to seven and eight, and then you could go do another one and hook seven and eight up to my cream layer here. So depending on the amount of layers you've got on your panty, you can adjust this. You can be like, oh, I'm going to do this much or I'm going to do that much. Okay, I'm going to pull this one out. And let's stick this on the dress form over there or see if the microphone will reach. Okay, some th people are, are interests are sparked. I Hopefully I've given you something new to consider. But let's, let's stick this on the dress form. And then I'm actually going to stitch a little bit of the top plate onto this because I want to show you guys how I do that. Um, Okay, so the other way you can do it is, see, we've got a girl here hanging by her neck. This is going to look really awful because I have a hard time putting this on without putting her on the floor. I'm going to have to put her on the floor. Cooperate. She's seen better days. Yeah, I have to do it on the floor. So the trick is if your, pole, if your dress form has a pole, you don't want to tack the tutu um, uh, I guess in a way arguing with the pole the whole time. You want to get rid of the pole. So that's why we hang them. And actually uh, what they used to say at Barbara Matera is they were, her and Karinska were notorious for getting tutus to the theater um, as the show opened. The guys that were driving them would come in the shop screaming, ladies, sew up your crotches. The truckers are here. And that came out of the fact that they were tacking them on dress forms that didn't have legs. So they would actually sew the crotch together at the very end. So, and I've even read in a few few uh, little accounts here and there, we used to have a bunch of Gerald uh, uh, Arpino's notes and Robert Joffrey's notes at the Joffrey um, stories about the girls going on with the crotches, just safety pin, you know opening night, and then you finish the costume for the next weekend. Okay, so the other thing you can do is get this on a form and steam it and go layer by layer. Again, give it more time than I am right now. Let me find the section that doesn't have anything tacked yet. So at City Ballet, they will do it on a dress form, and they will start um, with if the hoop if there is a hoop, they'll start without the hoop. So they'll push everything up all the way to the the crotch ruffles. So the if you were doing this the whole way, you could start without the hoop, but I'm starting with the hoop, and you could start with the hoop too. It's just kind of another approach. They wrap that up with elastic. Then to hide more knots, they work from this side. So they catch the hoop or whichever layer, down a layer or down two layers, and knot it all, just like we have been. Knot all of those spots, right? And the nice thing about doing it this way is if you don't have a, a feel for the shape you're creating, like I've learned over the years to really adjust the shape flat on a table, um, like I tack the shape into it. If you don't have a feel yet for that, this is a great way to do it because you can continually look and see what you're doing. So you would cut and tie all of those guys, right? Then. You lay, you decide if you're laying down one or two layers. I'm going to just lay one. Let's go full, fully beautiful. And each time you lay one down, you're going to decide if you're giving it some more steam, and you're probably going to. So let me just get one layer down here. 
my layers have been ironed so well together already that they want to live together. So you would lay the next layer down. And now if I want to start forcing a, a dip into this, if I want to start making it, you know, rigid but still have a bell quality, I'm actually going to slide my hand. I'm actually going to start trying to feel or manipulate the shape with each tag. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of push it down and kind of push the inside down a little bit so that you can you can actually start to force the shape. And that's a great way to do it too. And you could do this same approach and still price tag gun it. You don't have to do it all by hand. My scissors, where are my scissors? Right there, thank you. So you can really start to change the shape of it. So does anybody have a question about that? What, what I kind of just described? It's a lot, but I wanted you to have an hour full of new info or new ideas. And actually, this is for a YGP girl, so we're going to probably undo all of this because there's like five different things going on and tack it all in black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you get me, Mr. Tom, some black silamide and a hand sewing needle? Okay, so I'm going to take this off. Do, ba do, ba do. They're good. You guys are good. Okay. I have the best webinar takers ever. I don't mean to boast, but no, this is perfect. So let me kind of show you. Oh, it's still got a pin in our crunch. How, right? Finish tacking that sucker. Um, let me show you how I would start by putting this top plate on. So once this is all tacked, you don't have to worry as much about filling out the crotch, but just I'm going to still put a little bit of something in the crotch. The other cool thing with that cross stitch is sometimes. You'll have a tutu that that you've used for years that didn't had a hoop didn't didn't had a hoop that didn't have a hoop in it, and you will want to add a hoop. You can just make a hoop casing, ruffle it, and use and open up a couple layers and use that cross stitch to add a layer to it. You can also just lay a hoop right in there and cross stitch over the hoop. So you can use that great big cross stitch as a hoop casing. So it's there's a lot of there's a lot of things to combine and consider when you're doing all this stuff. Okay, so I'm going to keep my back closed. So in theory, this whole thing is tacked, right? And once it's all tacked, it's going to start to stay the correct size and shape more than when it's not tagged, but I'm going to grab my top plate and I'm going to start getting it, getting it arranged onto this tutu with you guys. So I've got a mark on my panty for my center front and I've got a center front mark on my top plate. And I find I have better luck cutting stuff like this so the hip hole in this top plate is about an inch bigger than the hip hole we're going for on the girl and on the hem of her bodice because it's easier to ease on a teeny tiny bit of material than it is to not have enough right so i'm going to just get this lined up you could have, I could have put this on before we started tacking, but I didn't want to mess up and wrinkle all of these beautiful um, 
bias cut ruffles on here. So, and I'm going to just tack half of this on. And then I can show the page to stagers tacking the other half on. So I'm just kind of splitting the difference. I got, I had a mark for my side too. So my front sides and back are on. And our bodice, um, the, our long line bodice that's going on here does have a piece. The side backs are cut on the bias. So there is some flex in the bodice. And I want to keep some flex uh, in my top plate too. And that's another reason why it's cut a little bit bigger. Ah, uh, there's the jugs. Maybe Amazon brought us a present. No, it's just somebody being loud in the hallway. Okay, so I like to backstitch this on. And I also, when it comes time to connect a bodice or a bosque, I like to backstitch it on. So we're using Silamide again, which is a waxed hand sewing thread from the fur making industry, right? How weird is that? I'm going to tie my knot. And one of the reasons I backstitch it on is a back stitch kind of works like a stretch stitch. Um, actually, why don't I draw it on a piece of paper? What a back stitch is. I'll draw it over here. So if you think of a back stitch, you're really going forward and back a little bit each time, kind of like that. And this space between where you're going back is flexible so that the panty can pull on that and it can shrink and expand a little bit without popping the thread. So that's why we're back stitching that. But Lord knows where, oh, I just set my needle. Okay, so really get in here now. Okay, and the back stitch is nice because if it, if it breaks, it's less likely to just unravel forever. So I'm gonna bring my needle up into here. And since I know that either a bosque or a bodice is going to go on to this again, I don't do it pretty, I don't do it very small. I keep it kind of big. So my needle is always going from the right to the left, but I'm traveling to the right. You can also do um, a back stitch that doesn't have as long of a traveling thread over the top but I find this totally works. And whenever I'm hooking something to the panty or something that like the bodice or bosque that might come off in performance, even though it never has, I go like three or four inches and then I tie a single knot so that if something does snap, if you do snap a thread, it's only gonna come off a little bit and she's not gonna be dancing out there in a section of her birthday suit or he so go a few inches and then tie a knot that wasn't a very pretty one and then what's great is that that is still a bit flexible and it's going to let the bodice kind of shape to her body a little bit and if a string breaks it's only going to unwound unwind a tiny little bit yeah, so voila, what time? We've got a couple minutes if there's any questions. Um, I'm looking right at the screen. I'm going to drink a little of my water. Let me know if you have any questions or want us to zoom in on something. Do you tack the edge of do, 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 the top plate? Yeah, um, some dogs we need to edit out the dogs somebody asked if i would top the, tack the edge of the top plate absolutely so once i get all of this business on probably we're going to use golden sequins and the button ear and tack this on and what i like to do so right this tutu is hanging with a little bit of an angle to it we're putting some angle in it but this top plate is flat so i like to do opposites i would connect the back and the front and then I would go in between and connect my sides then I can see I do have a little wave I've got a little bit of play in the top plate 
then I would divide that into half and then maybe divide each of those into half again. So that as you're working by going opposites, often with the top plate, you don't push the bubble all the way to one side because sometimes you'll cut everything absolutely perfect. And when you're finished, for no reason, you just have like one bump somewhere. It's because you just need to always keep splitting the difference. And you can hand tack this on too. Actually, something with all these places to hide stitching, we could even put hand tacks that kind of oscillate through there. Yeah. How do you tack the edge of decorated plates? We usually I just use the button here again, right? I'm just, it's just a button ear, button ear ad, you guys. Um, we usually just use the button ear and button near on the edge of top plates. Or um, I like if you've got like a pedal or a diamond shaped top plate, I, I just loosely tack it sometimes too with a running thread underneath but I don't like to hammer the edge down. Like I don't like to completely sew edges down of shapes because then the netting kind of starts to make uh, mountains and valleys around your top plate if it's too secure. Thank you, thank you guys. Did I get that one? Is that the same one? That's yeah. the same one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Should we show them the bodice that goes with this? so that anybody that didn't get the page to stage class will just want it. You guys, we covered a lot in that class. I can't believe it. And we're gonna do a little bit more because we're nuts. There's Tom. <gasps> Look how pretty that is gonna be. Oh my gosh. Then we're gonna stick some lace on it and a little bit of red here and there. Oh, there's our little bit of red. And some gold sequins here and there. And it's gonna be really, Mary Berry would say this one's going to be real scrummy. This is going to be, which is scrumptious and yummy. It sounds negative, but scrummy is a good thing. Let's show them the other one too. You got your hat. We're going to show off Hannah's hat here. Um, and Jared's bodice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. It. I forgot what I did today, you guys. Here's what I did today. Well, with help from other people. We started putting the plate on this one. And this one's partially tacked. You'll see we got our diamond going on here and then a few little loops and a sequin from the table. And then I've been steaming the top of this and slowly starting to put my topmost plate down. But the other thing I've got going on is I like this, I've got this like little extra ruffled edge just to bring some of the pink out. And I sewed that onto some really spongy tulle so that I can kind of stretch it out and place this edge, this little ruffled pink edge, exactly where I want. And that's right where, where I left off. And these diamonds, these are all bagged with netting. They're hooked on from the underside, so you can see these little bitty hand stitches. They're stitched from the back side of the top plate. And even this oldy looking trim here is just cross stitched on from the back side. Then once the bodice is hooked onto this, right, because the bodice is gonna change the pitch of it somewhat. Once the bodice is on and we give it one more steam, then we're gonna take little bitty golden sequins and figure out really where is the edge of each diamond. And we're gonna only tack the outermost points of the diamond because I still want there to be, I don't want it to be like completely hammered down. It's nice when you have a little bit of movement and that, and on stage too, I like, I find, I like to leave shadows. So, so this little piece of pink here is even going to broadcast a shadow onto the little halo of cream out here, and it's going to make it look more expensive. So think about leaving a little bit of movement and stuff. But let's grab the bodice that Jared has been working on. Is Hannah close with her hat? Bring it up. No, you got to hold it up. We're putting Hannah on camera here. Look how cute all of this is. So Jared has been finishing his diamonds and his neckline today. Okay, hold the hat up there. And Hannah made just the cutest little teardrop pillbox hat ever. So that's where we're at with this stuff. And all these are separate little flags and we'll put some little black sequins and rhinestones and stuff on there too. So that's where we is. Thanks guys. Now we're really saying goodbye. Because we're starting another one in two minutes. 
a short one, a brush up one.